If you're going to shoot at the king, best not miss. And make no mistake, the great orange one is now king. Biden is president. Trump is a king. That is how history will remember this moment in time a thousand years from now. Keep in mind, kings were once also elected in many cultures. Time and again throughout history, men once sought to be elected as king. Once. Because once a king is elected, the next one is not. That is the end of democracy. And that is where we are now, at the end of democracy, looking down over the precipice. Democracy is being assaulted from all sides, within and without. Those assaulting our democracies are most especially the ones claiming to save it. But look carefully at their words. They claim they would save the people, the pure of blood, the culture, the moral values, not the actual system of democracy we have, or any future one. This speaks to where we are as citizens of democracies. Whether in America, Italy, France, among others, the largest voting bloc is always the lockstep, right-wing, moral majority. Note the important words, moral majority, right-wing. Even those terms speak to the values inherent in the people who espouse them. Being right, being moral, according to their definition. Not being free, not having rights. So why does this problem continue to exist? Why are democracies constantly under threat, their existence so tenuous? Try to remember, Western democracy as we know it is still a new thing in the scope of history. We think that just because we've had it for one or two hundred years, that it is unassailable now. Most citizens, if they could be called that, think of de democratic government as a given, a fading, ubiquitous background, like modern plumbing, or perhaps the internet. You take it for granted. And just like your plumbing or internet, Nobody thinks about how it all works until everything goes to shit. So what keeps causing this problem? Education. Education. As a teacher, I posit that as long as our system of education raises children in 12 years of dictatorship, our democracies will ultimately fall into dictatorship themselves. An educated citizenry is a vital requisite for our survival as a free people. I would delineate these terms, educated, citizenry, because citizenry must be taught and citizenship practiced. This is not the case in Western education. Our Western system of education was created in an anathema to democracy. When oligarch industrialists needed minimally skilled wage slaves for the neo-feudal empires we call corporations. It is only by chance that education led some to seek greater rights by realizing such rights are possible. Speaking as a professional educator, schools must be democratic in nature. With children given maximum control over their own educations, have, for example, a weekly school meeting following Robert's Rules of Order. One person, one vote. And together, teachers and students with full agency can govern their own futures. Because in the modern classroom, the teacher is a dictator. And the teacher's dictator is the principal or director. There is no democracy inherent in our schools. And children learn, most of all, not from what they are taught, but how. You learn to live under totalitarian dictatorship from most of your childhood, and you subconsciously seek to recreate that environment as an adult. You don't think about it just because it's what you're used to, like an old shoe. It stinks, 
but it fits pretty good. Most of you are right now indignant at the idea of children being given control over their own education, and certainly don't see how it's connected to the troubles of democracies today. They'll just play around and never learn anything. It'll be like Lord of the Flies. I hear you saying this. Lord of the Flies was a satire of exactly your assumptions. And nearly the same thing was said 200 years ago about adults' self-governance. Those peasants can't govern. It'll be anarchy. In fact, your indignance is a convoluted, internalized reaction to the deprivation of rights you experienced as a child, continuing the cycle of abuse. You weren't allowed freedom or control. You rebelled by doing as little as possible or being actively abusive yourself. You were so tightly wrapped up in it, you can't see anything else as possible. Certainly not true democracy. Much like people in Russia or China right now. Russians don't have freedom, so why should anyone else? 80% of Americans are barely aware of politics or fundamentally repulsed by it. Why? Because they were taught to do so. Maybe their school had a student council, which was a joke. And that was their only direct experience with self-governance until they turned 18. Why don't young people vote at the same percentage as older ones? Because they were taught that it doesn't matter, that their opinions don't make a difference. Why should we expect young people to suddenly become citizens of their democracies? And now the former president has repeated thousands of times that the elections are rigged, which means they matter just about as much as your high school student government. People of all ages now no longer believe in our system of government. Again, this is because A, they have no experience with it, B, they don't know how it works, and C, they don't believe they can make a difference anyway. But there is one vote, and one voter who can, and that is a voter with a gun. And he placed his vote for Trump. He was either the best marksman or the very worst. Oh, great. Now he's a hero. That was my first reaction to Trump being shot. Because now he can really play his mind comp persecuted martyr game. I'm just like Teddy Roosevelt, he'll say. A true Republican. Many people will be enraptured. It's a miracle. It was God's will. Praise Jesus. He'll be like a rock star now. He'll say, JFK was a loser. He couldn't even survive a headshot. And everyone will laugh. And whether or not he wins, there will be civil war to some degree or another. We've been headed this way for a while. If he wins, he and his allies will try to impose a handmaid's tale religious dictatorship a la Project 2025, and people will resist. Or he will lose, and the 25% of Americans who worship him as a false prophet, savior, god, emperor, will say, we are justified in violence. Because you liberals fired the first shot. You probably think my ideas are crazy. And I hope I am wrong about our collective situation. But at the other end of this, whatever comes, when everything else has failed, maybe you can try some democracy in education and just see what happens. <laughs>